What's up guys, Mike from Slow Speed back here with another cold episode for you guys. It's winter time again. 41 degrees. Uh, yeah, I'm cold. Some of these videos I throw online, I edit them, and it's just talking back to back to back. I kind of want to change that a little bit, add obviously a lot of content content in there, but I have a lot to say. So how I think I'm going to do this is, so I have a new iPhone, this is a... This is a 11, 11 Max Pro X, something like that. It's like the new one. It's like the big version of the new one that came out. But, uh, yeah, it's a new one. It comes with a really nice camera, the little three thing. So I'm going to be vlogging on this uh, a lot and and streaming on it. So a lot of my talking and things that I'm doing, just hanging out, I'm going to be streaming it on YouTube so you guys can see it live and a later date, other people can see it. More so just when I'm going to run outside and do a couple of things to my car. It doesn't have to be a full-on production style video because, I mean, a lot of my videos don't aren't really big production, but for the ones that I do film and edit, I kind of want to put more content in that if you, don't, if you know what I mean. I would start it now, but I don't know, I kind of don't feel like it. A couple of things I want to talk to you guys about the Turbo. As far as that goes, I uh, have it on base tune. It's breaking up a little bit up top. When I did some data logs, I was looking at logs, and the boost target is about 17.6. However, the turbo spooling up to about 21, uh, 20.6, almost 21 pounds. So I'm not exactly sure as that. I sent the logs out to Juan. He's going to dial them in as much as possible. But that's kind of that seems to be the issue right now of to why it's breaking up. It always breaks up when the boost gets about 20 something psi, almost 21. Now I've done some research that has shown that the stock T-Map, the 3.0 uh, T-Map sensor only goes up to about 21 pounds. I'm not sure if that is the reason because the targets are lower at 17 or 16. But um, what I did was I went and I picked up a 3.5 bar T-Map sensor out of the uh, N20 BMWs. Basically that reads at a higher scale. Three and a half max is at about 35 pounds. I'm gonna throw that in there, show you guys how I code that over to work with uh, the car via boot mode and we're going to take it for a couple spins and I'm going to see if it still breaks up. Um, hopefully it doesn't. After we get this dialed up, we'll try to figure out uh, where's the max I can sit on pump fuel and then we're going to look for fueling upgrades and, you know, move along. And move. you guys can see recording. Oh, this iPhone camera is no joke. Got the new iPhone for you guys. So basically in here now, don't laugh at me, people, but I lost the screw in the VRSF thing, so I used a zip tie. Might not be the smartest thing, but hey, I did it. What we are looking at right here is the T-Map. This is pre-throttle body. This is the throttle body. This is the T-Map. Now, this is the manifold T-Map. I was told that I do not need to replace this just yet, unless I'm pushing more than 30 pounds. This is the one that I need to focus on right now. So I'm gonna take that out. Sorry for the ashy hands. I was getting a code for mass air, um, mass air too high. So I don't know if that fixed it, but now I'm gonna get a code for obviously mass air flow unplugged. Uh, it, like I said, it has ran a lot better without that, without the mass air flow connected. So maybe what I need to do is check the piping going from the mass air flow to the turbo. But what I'm going to the turbo inlet, but what I'm going to do is I might just let the guys at the shop do that because I am extremely cold and I just want to get the job done with a uh, little to no issue. One of the things that I run into when I'm out here and I'm in the cold is I tend to rush and do things and just want to go inside the house. So I might do something and just run a little quick job on it, run in the house and then not do it tight. Yeah. And I'll report back to you guys and let you guys know what I find. I will also insert uh, some of the logs and include a link down below where you guys can download the logs and uh, you guys can have at it. The old one is out. Got that on. I put the piece back on, by the way. I put the zip tie back on too, but I got a screw, so hopefully it'll stay tight, real tight. So, 
I got the, I got it in, oh, oh I'm so dark. So I got the T-Map on. I'm gonna go ahead and use Pro Turn and Freaks boot mode software to code it and uh, just hang out for a second and I'll show you guys how it works. So if you don't know my setup by now, OBD, wired up to the boot mode agent. Getting power through the USB port. We're gonna go into my maps. This is the this is the custom boot mode map. Config. Now in config, these are a couple of things that these are a couple of things that you'll see. And I will go over that in the next video. Some of the new additions onto the boot mode map configuration screen. You got a couple new interesting things on there, and I will be happy to go over the new ones in another video. Not this one, because I don't feel like it. So basically, we're gonna go down here. We got the pre-throttle, which is pre-throttle body, and we have the manifold. I changed the pre, so we're gonna go ahead. 3.5 warning. If your car isn't running a three map. Uh, warning, if your car isn't running a 3.5 bar T-map sensor, the vehicle will not start or may start rough. Do not choose this option unless you replace your OEM with a 3.5. You guys see me replace with a 3.5, so hey, that's it. Save changes. So now that I saved that changes, I'm going to go ahead and reflash this to the car. First things first, I'm going to put my seatbelt on. You guys will go with me once again on another ride to reflash the BMW. It's downloading. This thing flashes fast once unlocked. Fishing up, finishing up. Install, I'm mean, done, so it says I'll wait five seconds to start the car. So what I'm gonna go do is hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel my screen recording. Thank you. I'm gonna fire up the car and hopefully everything works perfectly fine. Oh, that was pretty smooth. Intake air temperature sensor and air mass meter. And just for the sake of it, I am gonna connect the mass airflow again, just because I don't wanna do two things and think one minute save this, so I'm gonna just connect the mass airflow, uh, run it through a check again, and then when the check engine light comes back on, we'll see. What happened? So you wanted to hear it. You wanted to hear what? Gunshots. You don't, you don't wanna hear the gunshots. It's, it's a little bit too loud, bro. Way too loud for you. And I might melt your bumper. Okay, yeah, it's a little loud. On the huh? Yeah, because honestly, I don't even feel comfortable doing it in somebody's driveway. You think I'm joking, but trust me. Yeah. I wouldn't even do that to Ryan or his family. Because it sounds like a gunshot. Like, bro, it sounds completely like a gunshot. So for those of you who do not know, I have a stage three big boost turbo kit in my car. It was installed recently, working on a kink still. A couple quick questions I wanna answer. I've gotten these pretty much out of the comments section. First, first thing is how much I paid for the turbo and how much the install typically would cost. Okay, so I paid about 3,700 bucks for the turbo and typically you'll be looking to spend anywhere between 12 and $1,500 for the install. Okay, I got a thousand bucks, but that was a little lower. Um, I paid a thousand bucks, but that was a little lower, uh, more so a shop that I was trying it out for the first time. However, a shop that's done it before, they know what they're getting themselves into. You're going to look to pay anywhere between $1,200 and $1,500 for the turbo. 
One of the next questions that I get from you is would I recommend Pure or the Big Boost Turbo Kit? As far as now, with my knowledge, going to Pure Stage 2, I think, is a lot easier. A lot of shops are more familiar with it simply because it's a hybrid turbo which means that it is the same exact turbo that comes out of your car. Just like factory OEM, how your turbo comes out, the new one goes in the same exact way, same oil lines, same coolant lines, the whole nine. Big Boost utilizes that master power turbo. The manifold is different, whole new design, oil lines, coolant lines, everything has to be fabbed up and customized in order to work with the car. That can prove a lot difficult for installers because well, while there is instructions, every installer, every shop has their own little ways of getting around things and doing certain things in order to make the kit fit. It's physically bigger. Whereas the pure turbo, it's a hybrid turbo. Hybrid turbos, like I said, utilize the same housing. With that being said, I would recommend the Big Boost Turbo Kit to people who want to go above and beyond and just push the rods to the moon in these cars. Maybe the Pistons too, if they want to come along for the ride. You really want to bring out the true M55 potential and you want a totally different car, definitely go big boost. One of the other questions is how much power does it put down? Now, unfortunately, I'm not a walking dyno. I have no clue. I know video will come soon. I just have to get this tuned dialed in and make sure that it doesn't break up when you're in a high RPMs or pushing high boost. So once I do that, I will definitely strap this thing onto a dyno and we're gonna see how much I can get out of pump fuel. We're gonna just go straight for the moon. I'm gonna just totally skip the blends. I get so confused and so annoyed and frustrated with the blends and 30% and 70% and but this pump is an E50 and that pump is E. I'm just gonna run full pump E85. One of the last questions that I remember receiving a lot from you guys in the comments is how am I going to solve the fueling crisis? Now, many of you guys know these m 55s suffer from fuel issues, even the B58s, the non-TU. And originally I was going to go with a port injection. I was never going to do meth. Uh, it seems like a good idea, but I was never going to do it. Uh, port injection is where I was going to go. However, doing more research in port injection, it's a little harder to tune and and it runs batch fire. And what batch fire means, it just takes the signal, they all just spray. One cylinder would get fuel at a time instead of batch fire where all six get it when the AIC or JB4 controller sends the, sig sends the pulse for the injectors. Uh, that's not the end of the world. Many people run port. Some of the dangers of running port injection would be obviously hydro locking motor by dumping too much fuel in it or just leaking, fuel leaking. A uh, little sleeve that it's a little metal uh, spacer that goes in between with the injectors. It just adds another chance of gaskets failing. So I was thinking of sourcing a B58 TU fuel pump, which will you'll find off of your A90 Mark V Supras. That's the goal as far as that guy. I hope I answered all of your questions as far as that so goes. guys, I'm back. It's another day recording on the new iPhone 11 Pro Max, whatever. So uh, mm, it's not going to replace the camera, but it's a lot easier to just jump out and uh, just start vlogging. So the check light like, came back on. What I'm going to do is plug the phone back in, go on to the boot mode software and run those codes and see what those are. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Pull up the codes, tell you guys what I see, and I've ordered the spark plugs in, so they should come in tomorrow from FCP Euro. I've ordered spark plugs before from them, so these ones are free with a lifetime warranty. I just got to mail back in the other ones and get my refund. So I will do that. Hopefully it's not a coil. I'm so tired of replacing coils on this car. So what I think I will do if it in fact is a coil is just go ahead and switch over to the Raceworks or Precision Raceworks coils. Like I said, the issue is it's starting to break up a little bit up top. Um, I did a little bit of research and it was saying sometimes when the gap is too far apart or sometimes when the spark plug gap is far apart uh, and you run high cylinder pressures and high boost, uh, the spark kind of blows out. A little bit closer should help it out a little bit. We're going to see. I'm just going to throw in all brand new spark plugs, start from scratch, uh, regap them a little bit smaller. I think I might do a 0.018 if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to go from there. <sighs> Mike from Slow Speed. Peace out, guys.